Now to the other big breaking news story we're covering today. Last night, we learned that on Friday, the FBI executed what the White House is calling a comprehensive search of President Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home and took possession of six more items with classification markings. The search, which Mr. Biden's attorneys say was conducted with their full cooperation, began at approximately 9.45 a.m. and wrapped up around 10.30 p.m. President Biden's personal attorney, Bob Bauer, said in a statement that the Department of Justice had, quote, full access to all the materials in the Wilmington home and that the search included personally handwritten notes, files, papers, binders, memorabilia, to-do lists, schedules, and reminders going back decades. Bauer also said that some of the items taken were both from Mr. Biden's tenure as vice president and from his years in the Senate. CBS News does not know the level of classification for the six new items that were retrieved Friday, but at this point, we do know that the number of known classified documents that have been recovered since November 2nd is between 25 and 30. The Department of Justice is considering searches of other locations tied to the president. The one Friday was overseen by U.S. Attorney John Lausch. Special Counsel Robert Hurd does not take over the case until the end of the month. Mr. Biden dodged questions about the document investigation most of last week, but on Thursday reiterated that he was fully cooperating with the investigation and hoped it would soon be concluded. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. We go now to Ohio Congressman Mike Turner. He is expected to head up the House Intelligence Committee. Good morning to you. Good morning, Margaret. Thank you for having me. So uh, we have this development in regard to the further materials that were found at uh, President Biden's Delaware home. What is your reaction and what does it signify to you that no one realized uh, that this classified material was missing, some of it dating back to his Senate years? Yeah, this is really incredible. And as you know, congratulations to you. We would not know anything about this if it hadn't been that CBS had broken this story. Uh, the White House nor the Department of Justice had shared any of the information with the public. And this really is one matter. We wouldn't have this issue if it hadn't been for Biden's attorney general uh, making the decision to raid former President Trump's house looking for, for classified documents uh, that were being held there. Um, what's amazing about all this is it takes us to the question of why were these documents here? Well, now that we learn that some of these go back to his Senate time, you know, clearly he's, he's become a serial classified document hoarder. Why did he have these? Who did he show them to? I mean, the only reason you can think of as to why anyone would take classified documents out of a classified space at home mm -hmm. is, to, is to show them to some, somebody. Who did he show them to? This is going to be crucial, I think, to the special counsel's investigation is why did the president have these documents? Who did he show them to him? And is it connected uh, to the Biden family businesses? Well, it, you know the differences, of course, too. I want to talk about the Biden situation, but just to clarify, when you reference President Trump, there were 300 classified documents. There was a warrant. There was refusal to comply in terms of handing things over. And the White House and the president's lawyer are pointing out that in the case of Biden, he granted permission, and this was consensual for the DOJ to come in and search. Does the fact that the Justice well, Department well, conducted the search signify anything more to you? And do you have any insight into the sensitivity of the documents? Sure, absolutely. I think this looks more like a cover-up than an investigation. Do you have any facts to back up your, your allegations that he was hoarding things in terms of intention to take classified material versus it's been characterized that it was somehow accidental? Do you have any insight into what these materials were? Well, they didn't fly to his home without him. They went on a train with him from the, the, his Senate offices and then in boxes that he was in, in charge of. The chain of custody here is going to be important because we know that these were in Joe Biden's hands and Joe Biden's control. And then it ended up behind his Corvette in his garage and in his office that he did not control and also throughout his house. And mm -hmm. so the, the, the special counsel is going to have to deal with the issue of what was the chain of custody? Who had these? Why did he take them to begin with? When did he get them? Yeah. When was he handed these documents? And what did he do with them? And this is a real critical question to all this. Why did he have these documents to begin with? And that yeah. is why the special counsel's work is going to be really important, because I can think of no reason why the president should have taken home as, as a senator or as vice president any classified documents um, that, that 
clearly yes. have no protection. They are available and open to anybody. You have also, before this development, asked for a briefing from the Director of National Intelligence. You said a deadline of Thursday. Do you have any further reason to believe they will meet that deadline, that you will get any insight into these materials? Um, I, we'll have to see. But I, what's critical here, and this responded. is very important, this is what's very important to all of this, Margaret, and that is the FBI and the National Archivist were working completely independent of the intelligence community or the Department of Defense. They claim this was yeah. all an issue of national security, but they did not speak to anyone who's involved in national security. So no response yet from the intelligence community? I have not received a okay. response, no. Okay. I also want to ask you uh, what leadership looks like with Republicans in charge. You were also on House <laughs> Oversight. Um, there, Correct. Uh, of the 26 Republican members on the committee, 19 of them denied the results of the 2020 election. Uh, your colleagues now include Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Scott Perry. They all played critical roles in, in the former president's attempts to overturn the 2020 election results. Do you have any concerns about working with these lawmakers? I mean, you're very much a centrist. Well, you know, even on the Democrat side, there's been a number of people who objected to President Bush's re-election and voted against certifying his election. I'm asking there's about you, your party, and your sides. colleagues. There's a long history of both sides uh, who, having raised issues, including, you'll recall, um, you know, the, the Al Gore taking President You're Bush's election. You're not an election, election denier by Supreme CBS Court. standards, just to be clear. I, I am. I am not. And I work with both sides of the aisle, and there are election deniers on both sides of the aisle. You are comfortable with all those individuals I just rattled off and the fact that the majority of the Republicans on this committee denied election results? Is that what you're saying? What I'm comfortable with is the electorate are, are very smart. And these people have been sent to Congress to represent their districts and to be part of the congressional debate yes. to lead us to what's going to be bipartisan, bicameral uh, resolutions. We have a split government right now. Republicans own, control the House. The Senate is controlled by the Democrats. You have a Democrat president. We're going to have a lot of debate and discussions. And I think this is going to be a very fruitful period uh, for, for Congress and for our country because it's going to have to be bipartisan, bicameral. And I believe that the president, in opening negotiations with the Republicans, is beginning to start that process. What is actually possible in this bipartisan, bicameral situation? What, what can you actually get well, I, legislation? I mean, depending upon on. what the depending on what the president's willing to do, I think it's unlimited, right? We have really tough issues right now. We have out of control inflation. We have an open border and, and record people crossing our, our border. What about gun control? Uh, we have we have the issue of Russia and and certainly in, in Ukraine and certainly China. I think we're going to have a number of issues that we're going to have to deal with. All right, Congressman Turner, we have to leave it there today. Thank you, Margaret.